You're right, everyone. Hope you're well. So, it's been a little while since I did a video. I do apologize, but I have been super busy doing boring, mundane, normal stuff. So, what we're going to be doing to break that is creating some mead, some Viking mead. Inspired. <laughs> now, the mead we're going to be making is cherry mead, or sometimes otherwise known as Viking's blood. Now, it is uh, a different type because there's one version of Viking's blood that contains hibiscus and hops as well as tart cherries. This is not that one because I'm not a great fan of hibiscus and it's a pain to get hold of. You can just literally walk into a supermarket, pick up the cherries and the honey all in one place, which is Aldi. Love Aldi. So, we're going to make some mead. Let's get straight into it. So because we're doing an on the pulp fermentation, we're also making this a quick recipe as well. We're not going to be using the standard demijohn. Um, we're going to have to strain all the bits or pretty much all the bits off if we're using a demijohn, which increases the steeping time for the cherries because the longer you leave them, the more flavors you're going to get from the cherry. On the pulp, we can just bung it all in and it does it at the same time. And I like that. Uh, it, does, it means we don't have to wait around for like two to five days for the cherries to steep in the liquid. Who has time to do that? Who does? Anyway, so that being said, I'm going to put this to one side. I'm going to sterilize this using bleach from washing up liquid. It's not going to harm. Then, then that's one thing done. All I've got to do is rinse it. So let's make mead. So the first step is we've got to heat through our honey. Now I am using set honey. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. Some people uh, don't have set honey where they live. Basically, it is the same as runny honey. It's just got less moisture in it. It means you can play around with it more and boil it and caramelize it and do all the things I do with uh, set honeys. But it is set, so we need to heat it through to melt it, so to speak, to make it easier to come out. I've learned this through many hours of trying to scrape set honey out of jars. So I've got my pan. Just going to put in my four jars of honey and I've boiled the kettle. Let's loosen this up. So I sit there. <laughs> I sit, you know. So our set honey has been. Uh, heating away and it's now mostly liquid it's still got a sort of chunk but close enough good enough the honey is heated through if you're using runny honey you don't need to do this step but uh, I, I, I like set honey so that's what I'm gonna use so out they come now now the great thing about using boiling water is this was clean technically now it's sterilized though it doesn't really matter because we're just going to dump this out, we're going to be heating everything up, so that's going to sterilize it. So it just needs to be clean currently. Good tip to know. So let's empty this out and let's uh, let's prepare the cherries. So we've got we've got our trusty stove. We've got our clean and technically sterilized pan, though it's not important currently. Looking pretty good. So we have one kilo of. Uh, Sweet dark cherries sent me back one pound fifty a pop for 500 grams. I've got a total of one kilo of cherries. Now we are making a gallon batch, so it's going to be quite heavy on the cherry, which is nice. If you want less cherry, then add one, <laughs> and if you want more cherry, then add as many as you like. Just oop, nah, caught it. Those are good cherries. Mmm. Wow. Ice cold. Really good. And they're already pitted. Fantastic. So let's dump these bags in. So we've dumped in our cherries. Now we're just going to add some boiling water. It just speeds up the process and it aids in the thawing because, well, these are currently frozen. So in goes around two liters as long as it's less than 4.5 liters it should all be good so in goes my approximately two liters of boiled water now the great thing about this is that the cherries will thaw out really quickly and become all mushy and squidgy so we can extract all those juices it's 
what we like to hear. So I'm going to give it a quick stir just to make sure pretty much all of these cherries have been thawed. Now we're going to do something off books. So I have clean hands. I found this to be the easiest way how to do it, especially if your cherries have pips. If they don't, then you can just use a stick blender because it won't break the blender. But if you do, or you just don't have a stick blender, like I currently don't, very clean hand and put it in. The cherries have cooled down the boiling water to pretty much uh, easily manageable for my hands. So I'm just gonna go through, I'm gonna take the cherries and I'm gonna squish the life out of them to pulp them up. The cherries have been pulped by hand and it's not as scary as it may seem. We haven't sterilized this yet, we're going to sterilize, that's why we've got this here. So we can use our hands, I mean there are still people that produce wine by squishing the grapes with their feet, so sterilized hands should be pretty good. If you don't want to do it, don't. That's, that's just how it goes. There are many ways to do exactly the same thing, but squishing it by hand works really quickly and easily. So, we've now got our cherries pulped. We've got our roughly two liters of water in there. It does kind of smell of cherries, actually, which is nice. So, on goes the heat. Just to make sure we're gonna sterilize everything, just to be 110% safe. So we've now got our heated through honey. Now, we're not gonna be playing around with the honey, and normally I like to play around with the, with the honey and caramelize it. I like the flavor, but since the dominant flavor is going to be these cherries. Well, there's no point. So let's uh, go forth and add in our now. Look at that, that is actually pretty runny. Apart from that bit. And don't forget to rinse out the jars using hot water. There we go. And now I've just got a stirry spoon just to make sure all of the honey is dissolved in here. Oh, this is gonna be good. Already smells good. It smells like cherries, sweet cherries. Who would have guessed? Right, now we're just gonna leave this to come up to uh, basically the boil and we can turn this off. We just wanna use it to sterilize everything just to make sure. So uh, just gonna leave it alone. So our cherry honey must has now reached the boil, which is cool. So we can turn it off now. Inside, everything in here is sterilized. So it uh, hides a multitude of sins. We, we didn't need to sterilize a lot of stuff before, but now, now we've done the boil, everything from now on that touches this needs to be sterilized. But first we need to cool this down. And since we're gonna be putting this into my sink with cold water, cold water bath, I'm gonna add in the yeast nutrient now. It's going to well, basically dissolve a lot easier. Dissolves easier in hot than cold, so in it goes. Now you may notice I am not gonna be adding in any pectolase. One, approximately. Ah, go on then. One and, one and a quarter, just to be different. <laughs> now you may notice I'm not gonna be using pectolase in this recipe, we're going well, basic old school. We shouldn't really need pectolase. It, it just makes it look pretty. It makes it look clear. But I think it will look better, kind of hazy. That's what I'm. That's what I'm going for. And plus, it just saves buying something else. But it does smell good. So, in the cold water bath it goes, and uh, I'll see you in about half an hour. So while our cherry and honey mixture, cherry mead, has been cooling down, I've gone ahead and I've sterilized my worktop. The brew bucket has been rinsed. It smells fresh and not bleachy. It smells bleachy, not what you want. So everything has been, well, we're all prepared. So this is the good bit. We just dump it straight in. I mean, That is impressive. Right, so I'm just gonna to top it up with some water to our fill line. 
So we want our five liters. Ha ha ha. There we go. Got myself my stereo spoon. Actually, I can smell the cherries and the honey. I can actually smell a lot of honey. And the cherries are a little bit in the background. Oh well. It's got a whole month to uh, work its magic. So we're topped up at the five liter mark. Looking good. Now we've got our sterilized hydrometer just kept in fresh water. It's the thing I do. Now, this hydrometer is standing up. We used pretty much two kilos of honey and then cherries on top. So uh, if you wanted to include the sugars in the cherries as well, that's an extra 130 grams on top of uh, the two kilos of honey. So it is sitting right at 1.120 on the hydrometer. So that's somewhere around 19% maybe, somewhere. The hydrometer actually stops at 17%. That's just how it goes. Now, the yeast we're going to be using, oddly and amusingly, is just universal wine yeast. Now, uh, it only ferments to about 14 or 15%. But for what we're doing, perfectly fine. It is going to ferment away, it's going to die, and the excess sugar that it couldn't ferment is going to be pre-sweetened and it will all be mead and it will be good that's the idea now I did add in a little bit of extra nutrient so hopefully that will help and the cherries have some nutrient in it itself so let's pitch it and let's do it just sprinkle oh no I finished my bag of Gervin yeast oh <gasps> right all we have to do now is shut on three sides. That is done, which is pretty cool. So we've made mead, Viking mead, Viking sweet mead. It should be good. And uh, hopefully one bucket and done. So we'll be back once this is done and we'll see how it turns out. So uh, I'll see you then. Take care.